Which city should I move to to maximize my dating potential and do dating apps still work? Guys, these are two common questions we see a lot on the internet concerning dating. And hopefully, we'll help. Yeah, we pulled these off Reddit. These are two commonly asked questions. Hey, guys, which city should I move in? Which city will I thrive in? As well as, does online dating even work anymore? I got like 100 matches and no girls wanted to meet up. So make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications because hopefully we'll get to a deeper level of understanding of these issues. Or perhaps I should say, Andrew, deeper layer. But you know what else has layers? Small ass sauce. Got a lot of layers of flavors and a delayed Sichuan kick. It'll little start your, uh, you know... Get your tongue buzzing in the background. So anyways, check it out, smallassauce.com. I mean, of course, to answer the first question, Andrew, location and environment do matter, but it goes deeper than that, right? Yeah, it also matters what you have to offer that environment because every environment is different. There's voids in every market, right? But it also depends on what you're offering. So as much as I want to say, hey, guys, move to this and that city, obviously New York, LA for Asians, that's not a wrong choice. Never Honestly, a wrong choice. Never I, I, a wrong choice. Toronto is not a wrong choice either. Never a wrong choice, right? But still, also how you fit into those cities matters a lot. Yeah. I know this guy that I grew up with in the suburbs of Seattle. He was an electronic Korean DJ, one of the only Koreans in the whole city. He moved to a rural Tennessee town because he met a Southern Belle that was sort of obsessed with that Steve Aoki, sort of like foreign Japanese Korean DJ look. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So he wouldn't have been able to like go to Tennessee and like kill it on the online dating apps, but he ultimately found his Southern Belle wife in Tennessee. Had something to offer, guys. Obviously, if you're an outgoing social Asian bartender guy, yeah. you're going to have something to offer a lot of cities because you can work at any bar and you're going to meet yeah. a lot of women. So here's the interesting choice, Andrew. If somebody just asked me off the bat, yo, should, as an Asian guy, should I move to Tennessee and do online dating? The answer would be no. Right. But this guy found his biggest yes. So it goes to show you, it's, it varies. It depends on what like layer you're looking at, right? right? So yeah, like there, there's the simple answer, but the detailed answer can get way more complicated. Um, as far as this guy, Andrew, who's saying, I got a hundred ma matches on online dating, mm. but no IRL dates. How do you explain First it? First of all, this is very common. And I want to say on our experience of online dating, I'll speak mm. for myself. You will end up swiping a lot and then from that, there's a certain percentage that you'll match with. And then from that, there's a lower percentage that will even talk to you. And then from the people that you talk to, it's a lower percentage that you're actually going to convert to meeting up in real life. Right. It's like an inverted pyramid, right? It is very tough. I'm not going to lie, guys, from the conversion rate. is David, is there a statistic that says, what, 1% of match or like 10% of matches you actually meet up with? Or it depends on, you know, also, again, what you're offering. If you invite every girl out to Omakase your rate of meeting up in person will probably be higher because people will find that appealing. Right. right? Is it, if coffee or boba versus omakase, you might have a different conversion rate. Right, right, right exactly. So what I need people to understand, and, and this is having been in the online dating world for several years now, okay, back on the website, there was websites. Obviously, I've done it in real life dating plenty, but we've been on, we've used the apps. You need to understand that the online dating apps now, it's a sport. And what I mean by sport is that there is technique, there is practice, there is a learning curve, there is stamina involved, and there is a way to prepare and get yourself better for it. Mm. There's all these things, and there's different layers to it, man. I well, think- is, there, is there a reason why, uh, isn't that the reason why there's so many people making so much money off those subscription-based <laughs> courses to try to teach you to learn exactly. the game? Exactly. There's so many coaches out there, and I'm not saying, like, you could ask your friend who's really knowledgeable, or you can pay for one of these online dating coaches, sure, whatever you choose to do, I'm sure they have real information. But literally, guys who are like, I don't know, I haven't been successful on the dating apps. That's like saying, hey man, when I go to the park, I can hit seven out of 10 free throws. How come no one wants me on their five on five recreational league team? Or if someone's like, hey, I'm pretty quick. How come no team wants me on their flag football team as their number one wide receiver? Or it's like, hey, I know how to cook some chicken thigh in the air fryer. How come people don't think I'm a chef? Guys. You're mm. one dimensional. You might have, hey, I have a good education or hey, women have told me I'm good looking, but I'm still not doing well. It's 
a multi-layered game, man. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I would say it, if I were to compare it to sport, Andrew, there's like your layer one players, which are looking up in the face-up ISO. That's like Cam Thomas. Cam score. Thomas is an incredible score within a layer one face-up interaction. There's layer two players, Dame Lillard. Dame Lillard likes to come off that high pick and roll and then operate off <laughs> that, right? But then there's a layer three player like Steph Curry, Andrew, where he got layer one, layer two in the bag. But if you take away all that and the play breaks down, guess what? He's going to reset and relocate, run halfway across the yeah. floor and still get an open yeah. shot because that's his level of IQ and understanding of how deep this game goes. Now, to I think most guys are still stuck at level one, but they need to be at least level two. I'm not saying you got to be level three and master the game 10 out of 10. Yeah. Obviously, it would help if you thought about it that much, but you need to be layer two. You yes. got to up your game. It is no longer just, I posted pictures, and then I matched with girls, but then she wasn't interested. F online dating apps. I hate them. It's like, dude, that's so simplistic. For sure, for sure. You're thinking the sure. game, you're thinking of it too simplistic, man. For sure. I mean, Andrew, some people were arguing that it's all the city that matters. These are the people who are basically saying, for the guys who don't want to develop the layer two or level layer three understanding of it, just pick New York For or just pick a city with a fashion industry. Dude, like we I'm going to say it again. L.A., Toronto, New York. You can't go wrong. Give it a swipe. Change your location. Swipe in those cities. If, maybe if you've exhausted those cities, swipe yeah. in Asia. You can swipe in. Houston, Texas, yeah, no, but yeah, swipe in San Francisco. I could see Houston working better for some people than New York, though, even though Houston would never rank as yeah. high on a layer one yeah, yeah, answer. Yeah. Let's say you're kind of like a, you know, a thicker Asian guy with tattoos. I would say give Houston a shot. Why not? Deep voice. Yeah, but also New York and L.A. still. Always right. New York, L.A. and Toronto. Always. For sure. Always. For sure. Guys. <laughs> Always but, LA, but, New York, but, and Toronto. But, but for example, Andrew, if you have an Ivy League education, you went to a high ranked college, but not a lot of people know about that college. <laughs> Go to New York or Boston, where they tend to value the college that you went to more yeah. because those are the metrics and that's like the way the analytics are structured in that environment, right, right? Right, right, Somebody said, just go to any city in Asia. Somebody said, please go to Hawaii. I'll say this though. It's important to go places where the type of girl that you like or that you, the archetypes you're attracted to are also attracted to you. Yeah. that That's a pretty key thing. That's like a layer two understanding that a lot of guys don't have. They're just like, oh yeah, I'm like a computer engineer, but I love ABGs. And it's just like, I just don't know how many ABGs like computer engineers. Well, no, or, I do or guys know that I, present. As I do know. Yeah, I know some computer engineers. By the way, some software engineers that are kind of come from that background that are buff and tatted and know how to spend their money. And those guys are going to do fine. It's not necessarily about your occupation, but it's it is true. Do you come off as a software engineer? Do you appear to be a software engineer? You know, it'd be cool a software engineer who doesn't look like a software engineer. Right, right, right. Let's move on to the next post. This is the guy with the 50, 100 matches in a month or whatever, but no dates. This guy said, man, you need to just focus on IRL game and live in an awesome life mm. in real life. So my, my life is so awesome with all the cars and the watches and all the places I fly to on my Instagram. I just message girls on Instagram so I don't even need Hinge. Mm. And then somebody else said, yeah, that is true. That, that's a good point. But having a cool online dating profile is possibly one-tenth or maybe one one hundredth the effort of having a Dan Bilzerian life in IRL. Yes, I agree that having a truly cool and substantial and multifaceted and holistic cool lifestyle. You about the jet set lifestyle is right? so hard to achieve. Gosh, the set, the best thing you can do is at least make yourself appear as if you're a good man on online dating. Guys, it is true that if you are a baller and you know how to spend your money, and you, you're well put together, yeah, yeah. your systems, usually if, you'll, you'll know people. If you live the life of a celebrity, you don't, re, you, I think that you could use the apps, but you don't need it because the life you'll be living will be so dynamic in like, a certain Like, circles. how about this? Let's just do a test. I don't care how you look or what scene you're in, <clears throat> but if every weekend you have multiple people invite you out to things, and you're a guy, you probably live a well-oiled social life. 
Because right. that's usually for girls. Girls get invited out to a lot. Guys, we do the inviting. So if you're a guy and you get invited out to multiple things every weekend, you're probably somewhat of a social cool guy. There's a reason world. why, and this is an extreme example. We know a guy who cashed out his shares of a startup in Silicon Valley. He ended up with like, you know, he was light rich. He moved to Shanghai and became a bartender. Not He, he had enough money to capitalize and own the bar, but he didn't want to do that. He just wanted to be a bartender in yeah, Shanghai. Sometimes you just want to- it, it gave him the life he wanted, the exposure that he wanted. Dude, being a bartender, for example, is like already being on the dating app all the time because of how many people you meet. And okay. this is why you put yourself in a position to meet a lot. Now, whether it's online dating, I'm not saying everybody got to be a bartender, but whatever puts you in front of a lot of different people is key because then you're going to get exposure and you're going to get a chance to talk to everybody. And plus it is hard. I'm not going to lie to be the Dan Bilzerian, Steve Aoki's listen, their dads actually lived that jet set. No, they were already baller I mean, playboy they, lifestyle. Their dads were essentially mini Hugh Hefner's yeah. already. That's why they were able to build on top of it and take it that far. Yeah. 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 Um, there was a lot of arguing back and forth. No, it's all about IRL approaching people or online dating. A lot of people defending online dating, obviously. And a lot of people saying that this guy, Andrew, how important is text game in your opinion? Like, for this guy was saying, if you have 100 matches and you can't actually convert any of them into an IRL date, you must have bad text game. Oh, my, yeah. Well, my opinion is if you had, he said 50 matches or yeah. 100. And he said he usually has takes about 15 messages back and forth before he asks a girl to go on a date and he has no conversion. All rate. right. If you have 50 matches and you have not gone on a date with any of them, it's something that you're saying probably. You got to be coming a across... As a serial killer. Yeah, you might be coming off weird. You say something offensive. You're taking too long. You are not proposing anything of substance. I'm not saying omakase, but I'm just saying even like, just, hey, you want to check out a couple bars in this area? What are you talking about? That's like 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Like, you know, I'm saying like, still offer something, especially if you're in the city. If you're in New York, you have to offer something. So this guy's obviously doing something, something wrong. Kai Ten Sushi. If you don't want to pay spring for omakase, because I get it. Yeah, it's some pricey. girls, the girls who's down for something humble usually are, are I, nice. I mean, I would say, I would say generally, if a girl likes your photos, I would just ask her out within the first five volleys. Vo one volley being like a ping ping. I would say just ask oh, her out one, within, <laughs> after five down and backs. Yeah, yeah. After I would say just within the first five. Yeah, because, just say, hey, do you want to meet up? Oh, do you uh, like? Are you free here and here? Yeah. Like. A lot of dudes don't even, maybe there's another video on how to even ask out a girl on online dating, but anyways. Yeah, listen guys, like we said, there's a layer one understanding, layer two, layer three. Some people, Andrew, they stay at layer one their whole life. I see a lot of, uh, you know, I'm just gonna call it out, Andrew, a lot of kids from China, they love basketball. Basketball is the number one sport in China. It seems like sometimes if they didn't go to a basketball academy, their understanding is like always just face up ISOs and like fancy moves forever. There's no like uh, play action. There's certainly no off ball movement. Listen, guys, I'm just saying somebody got to teach people the layers. All right. Um, ultimately, I'll say this, <coughs> Andrew, I think there's more Asian guys in the online dating game than there ever were. I think in possibly in previous generations, a lot of uh, especially the more technical guys, they either just opted out of the dating pool or they just got set up at church or something like that. So it's kind of reminds me of the first time investors that Robin Hood got in, interested in investing. So people are buying like options and uh, calls and stuff like that. They're looking at the VWAP on Webull. But these are like layer one people that have like all of a sudden looking at a game that goes super deep. Right. But who's going to teach them all the layers? Mm. So it's like, hey man, I went through it with investing too. To be honest, I mean, like, I was looking at all the no, leading, lagging indicators. I didn't know what I was whether doing. Whether it's investing or learning basketball or learning how to date online, it is better to get in real life coaching. Somebody who's sitting down with you, who can talk to you, get a feel for you, cares about you. That's going to be the best. But until then, guys, you just have to know there are different layers to this. You do probably don't understand the game. And, you know, if you make yourself appealing and you've done what you think you can to lose a little weight, hit the gym, get a new haircut, get a little couple photos up there. Professional photo shoot. Dude, there's AI now. I'm not saying lie, but I'm just saying use AI to like, you know, touch stuff up. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's say you, first of all, don't necessarily recommend the gym selfie. There's an old man, his naked butt is in the gym selfie. Use the crop feature on the Google Pixel Pro 8, man. Dude, even Instagram has uh, AI now filters. You can say, select this subject and put it on some background. Anyways, I'm just saying, 
Get creative, guys. Anyways, uh, let us know if you guys want more specific advice. I'm down to maybe do like a coaching video, like an online coaching video, I guess, of Listen, what man. I suggest. I Listen, would do. man, you can score 30, but Steph's 30, Dame's 30, and Cam Thomas is 30. Those are a different 30. Yeah. Let us, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Leave a comment on both these popular questions. One, what city should I date in as an Asian guy? And number two, should I pick online dating or IRL? Until next time with the Hot Pot Boys, we out. Peace. Peace.